Test, test, now? test. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, it's on. Okay. And we're streaming. All right, we're going to talk in this section about a uh, blogger and why you would use blogger as opposed to something like WordPress or another blog. Um, I like blogger, and I'm, as I said, we're, we're recommending tools that we find uh, useful for our purposes, and so, um, uh, but feel free to use any tool you want. We'll explain why we use this one, and you can make your own choice. But I use Blogger because Blogger, again, is part of the Google suite of tools. Um, so it works very well with all the other Google applications that I use. Um, one of the big reasons that I like it is because it allows me to control a map that I can put into the blog. Um, Maps are a critical part of, of fires. Uh, people never feel like they have maps that are new enough or good enough or recent enough. And it's especially bad if the map that we have for some site isn't within our control, we in, on the fire, our GIS people, plans people, or ourselves. So um, when it isn't, um, if that map isn't updated correctly, it's we in the PIO office or at the fire that hear about it. So I like to be able to control the map, and Blogger has an option to put in an HTML iframe map. And those maps um, we can build, and they're relatively simple to build. And we'll be talking about that later in another section, about how to build those maps and put it into your blog. But that's a reason that I like Blogger. I can't put that iframe map into a WordPress blog. Um, it also allows you to post things. Blogs, in general, allow you to post things you can't put on Facebook. Facebook has a fairly general layout. And you can add video, and you can add a picture, and you can have some albums. But if you want to leave lots of links or, or things like that, there isn't a place to do it. And you can't mess with the format very much. The way it looks, the color too much, um, the, the layout of the page, it, uh, a Facebook page looks like it looks. Um, and so with a blog, you can do a lot more designing. You can customize your page if you have the time. Um, and you can also uh, have lots of places to store links and other materials. So they're good for educational things that are educational, whether it's prevention teams, maybe having materials for a prevention project, or on a fire when you want to be able to talk about what a feller buncher is, or what happens when it rains, or um, what a red flag warning is. If you had educational pieces written, you have somewhere to post them. And they're harder to do on a Facebook page. Um, so the other thing I like about it is it has the ability to, just like um, Facebook, you can post from your phone. You can actually post to your blog from your phone. And you can, uh, you can make a lot of people admins on this. So if you want your entire staff to do this, your entire staff or, say, a joint information center, Everyone can use a special email address and post directly to the blog, whether they're you know, driving along the road and they've stopped to report on smoke, or whether they actually want to go into the blog and do it. There are a lot of ways to do it. It allows for a lot of collaboration, more so than a Facebook page, which may or may not be quite as collaborative as easily. Um, but the other thing is some people really hate Facebook. I've, I get asked why we build redundant systems. Why would you build something that's in um, on Facebook when you're putting the same thing on the blog and then you're putting the same thing on Twitter because people like the platform they like. I use fa Facebook a lot more than I use a blog in my day-to-day -day life. I have Facebook on my phone. So I'm going to I'm going to want to to join or like something on Facebook cuz I can scroll through it on my phone when I'm sitting around on my phone in the airport at dinner I'm going to look at that. Some people do the same thing with Twitter, which is why we use Twitter. Other people like to have a more robust system. They want to sit at their computer and look at it. Uh, uh, blogs are great when you're sitting at a desktop or using a tablet and they also are optimized for your phone, so you can you can use them in both. But a lot of people only like to look at Facebook on their phone. So, and then other people hate Facebook and won't look at it at all. So you have to have something else. So, using a lot of systems that are redundant is part of uh, is part of the deal. We we do it on purpose, and and they are redundant for a reason. Um, I would say when you're starting a blog up and you need one right away, if you if it's quick, it's an incident. Just get it up and get it started. You don't have to make it look pretty right away. You can build it as you go, unlike some other pages. I will throw up a page, get the name title that we want to have on it, get the first post up, hi, we're here, the team is here, this is where we're from, maybe a link to the team page, whatever we're going to do, and get started. And then I have people just build in the background. So the blog changes all the time, um, but it's, you continue to add gadgets and things that links and, and maps and pictures and logos and whatever you're going to add but it doesn't change what's coming in the middle of the blog so it's still easy for people to find things um, but i want to say the key to to blogs as with anything including facebook is 
if you're just going to use it as a place to post press releases, don't bother. That it isn't a place just to post a press release. It's a social media site, and it's a social media site because it allows you to engage in two-way conversation. If you're not going to engage in two-way conversation, then don't bother building it. You can just post press releases to your website or or stick them up on InstaWeb, which also doesn't have two-way communication. The key to good social media use is that two-way conversation. Talk like a person. Don't use agency speak. Just have a conversation. Wish people a good morning in the morning. Ask them how they're you know, holding up. Um, talk to them like, like a real person is the key to being really, really successful at a blog. Um, if you're just going to be posting very simple things, a very simple template will do. And Blogger has a whole bunch of templates. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. So if you're just posting some updates and some links, you got a simple template. If you want it to be really fancy, you can make it really fancy. It's entirely up to you. Um, I want to show you some um, uh, a blog that has some pages um, so that you know what's possible to do if you scroll down a little bit. Um, this is a Blogger blog, and it was a smoke blog that's done in Washington. And you'll see at the top here of the writing, there's these uh, black tabs, air quality now, smoke health, where's the fire? Those are called pages. They're not part of the main blog. The main blog is the white page in front. And that's what you feed into that scrolls through every day. The pages at the top, those are stagnant. They don't change. So you go in and you edit a page. And then those are, those are links and things that don't change over time. But they're great to use for educational information. So as you can see here, they have um, there are webcams located on one tab. And so we found a lot of webcams that would show people smoke. So we put those on one page and the locations and all the links to those. So it allows these kind of pages that you can add to a blog. You can't add to Facebook. And they, and they allow you to educate people and, and put in very specific educational um, uh, links. Um, Let's see, if you scroll down to the right hand side, um, when we talked about naming protocols, down there in the archive, you see the archive on the right. The archives fold up as, they, as they're done. They, um, they, uh, if you go down to 2013, and then open a month, whichever looks busy, there's only one. There you go. OK, so what we're looking for is wh what I tried to convince them to do was use a naming protocol. And you can see here that they didn't really. Down near the bottom, the one that says August 1st, it has a time down a little further. That was the naming protocol we were aiming for. Give it a date, the, the month, the day, the year, and then a time, and then a title. And that way, if you couldn't remember the title of what you were looking up, you at least knew the date. And it looked very neat because everything was, and you can see they didn't really stick with the naming protocol, but that, that was their choice. When I'm on a fire and I run a blog, I ask them and I establish a naming protocol so that everything is by day and date. So if someone wants to look something up, they can look it up by date, and then they can see what, what the title is. Um, let's see. Um, I'll let, I'll let Nathan talk a little about. There are programs that will let you auto post a blogger, which don't work very well, but I'll let Nathan address that. Um, I was going to show you another blog. It was on the Druid complex, um, it, which was in Yellowstone. And, um, and they used this fire for I mean, uh, the blog for a lot of uh, Educational. <laughs> I'm being distracted watching. Um, they used. They decided to use this in Yellowstone. There's the map we talked about that we built and we own. There's obviously nothing showing on the map because it mostly had fire layers and there's no fire there now. But when you scroll down, um, w we used it for fire education for a lot of things. One, I'll, I'll describe some of the layout you're seeing in the upper right-hand corner. Local active active fires is a layer brought in that shows it's a different kind of map, but it shows where all the local active fires are uh, in the area, and um, and it and that and it cha it was live at the no I guess this one was a, this was actually a picture because this is obviously showing fires which aren't there but those were all the fires that were there at the time and so it gave us a different map to show and we stuck it in there people liked this map because they could print it on the left side on the top you'll see a slideshow right there are photos now what we did was we had pictures that the national park gave us access to their Flickr account and they let uh, they gave us the password and they let us feed our photos into a special folder just for our fire because obviously they have a lot of pictures already of Yellowstone. We didn't want every picture of Yellowstone. We just wanted those from the fire. So they created a folder. We dumped all our photos in there. And then we put a gadget in, is what this is called for this layout, that shows a slideshow that's a, just a link from that slideshow. Below that, you can see the um, 
the Twitter. You can, you can g in Twitter, which we'll show you later, you can build, uh, grab an HTML code from your Twitter, and this we were following the Yellowstone NPS Twitter, and, and we decided that we would, um, we'd bring that Twitter feed into the blog. So now every time Yellowstone would tweet, and that included us as well, because we went ahead and used uh, the Yellowstone account, um, it would come into the, into the Twitter account. So, um, and then more importantly, up top, the, um, on those pages here, <coughs> we, people asked us a lot of questions. And they used questions like, well, what do you mean by what happens when? This one is what happens when. What happens when wildlife are caught in a fire? What happened to the animals? We get asked that all the time. So we had one of our PIOs write this up. We ran it by the fora, the park. They approved it. Um, we posted it. Down a little further, that was the fourth one. The third one was what happens when it rains? And it started sprinkling, and you get the question, the fire's going out. Well, no, not exactly. And so we had someone write it and got it approved. What happens as the land recuperates? What happens when the firefighter leaves? It gave us a place to answer questions that people commonly ask. The other one was, what do you mean by? And so we had definitions of things. <coughs> Excuse me. What do you mean by remove fuels? Um, so we, again, we, every time we wrote things long like this, we got them approved by the park. And then we posted those things, because those are more than just our regular fire thing. What do you mean by red flag warning? What do you mean by a feller buncher? We could drop pictures in. So these things went on to our, these pages, and we used them for educational purposes. Um, and we also used, we had different maps. As we had really cool maps that we wanted to keep around and not bump off the page, we would, we would um, keep different size maps. And uh, di um, when we had progression maps and things like that, fire history maps, we could, we could leave those maps in there for people to look at and to print off. And then we also used it um, for another tap for videos. And some of these were interviews. Um, one of them was with my boss, who was the IC. This was a webcam uh, at the one end of the Druid fire. Um, this was the incident commander. We did some with the weather uh, guy weather balloons. So blogs allow you to do a lot of things. There's a lot of flexibility in this. Um, and up in the top, you'll see that line under the map that says Yellowstone fires. Um, we can put in a news feed. And so what it did was that we put in a search f for things with the name of our fire. And then that spools through there, just headlines. So I think blogs allow you a lot of flexibility for that sort of thing. So um, you don't have to be a webmaster. That's a nice thing. To do something kind of with this much information and complicated, you'd almost need to start a web page, and that would require a webmaster and somebody who knew a lot more than, than you did. Um, and one last thing is, you, it, because of the archive, you forever have a record of the incident. So should you decide to make this page, instead of, say, Druid Complex, should you want to make it, say, Yellowstone Fires, they could continue to use this page and this map and these logos, and this old stuff would just bump off the bottom. And it would just go to the bottom and go over to the archives, and the new stuff would come in. And years and years would accumulate in the archive. And you would have records of everything you had done for, for a long period of time. So I think, for, for me, it's an outstanding tool. Um, Nathan is going to show you a couple of pages, or a page at least, of some examples of blogs he's used in Colorado, and then talk to you a bit about tools. So, so far we have looked at two examples of how blogs can be really used on an incident, or in the case of this, um, smoke is the, the consequence management side of an incident. And uh, what we want to look at now is I want to just show a few blogs that show you can use a, a blog for day-to-day -day management. So CO Emergency, for instance, is a blog that the Colorado Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management uses to post pretty much everything that we would post publicly. So if there's a press release that needs to go out, it would go out here. If there's an update that needs to go out, it would go out here. If there's photos that need to go out, it would go out here. You can see what Chris talked about. We have tabs up on the top for specific information that's static. We have widgets and gadgets on the side. Just one example at the state level. I'll show you one example at the local level. ecemergency.org is a Google blog that was used by Eagle County, the Joint Information Center in Eagle County. It was recently used during the ski championships for uh, 2015. And they use this to share emergency information um, as well as safety messages, thank yous. Uh, they were able to highlight partners at the JIC all sorts of different things. This is an excellent example of how a blog can be used um, not only on a fire, we have the, not only can, do we have good examples of blogs on fires like this Druid Complex, 
on uh, state level, but we can have local level planned events you can use a blog for uh, right up here. So now we're going to get into details of how you actually create your blog and work with it. So you start off by going to blogger.com. Again, if you let's go back to where we start, stopped off with the Google uh, Drive training. When we were in here, if you prefer not to type in blogger.com, you can come up here to the corner to those where those dots are at, find the little icons over here, hit more, and you'll find blogger hiding in here somewhere. And for whatever reason, it's really hiding. So I'm not finding it. It's in here somewhere, I promise. There it is, hiding down here. Hit blogger down here. Once you get it in your head, it's actually, I find it easier to just type in blogger.com. Once you get in here, you'll see that uh, if you haven't set up any blogs before, you're, this, you're not going to have any of this on your screen. You're going to need to come in here and hit new blog, which is going to open up this screen right here. Then you're going to have to give your blog a title, give it an address, and you can change that address later on. But what should that address be? That address should be in line with the naming convention you set up earlier. So it may be the exact same thing you set up for your Gmail account. Uh, just make sure you give some thought to that. You have a choice of different um, different templates that to use. My recommendation is, unless you have a lot of experience with Blogger, you simply go with the simple platform and it will give you the easiest uh, platform to use, it's easiest template. Once you've clicked all that, you hit create blog and you'll be well on your way. So let's uh, assume that you've gone through that and you've done that. Your blog is going to show up right here. If you have access to multiple blogs, you'll see you have multiple blogs going on right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the one we created for this exercise and this training. It's SMEM Training 15. When I click on that, I come into what is really the guts of this page. This is not the public-facing page. If I wanted to see the public-facing page, I, there's a square up here called View Blog. I can hit View Blog, and here we go. And uh, we've uh, already done some training and some practice in, um, on this blog, so its formatting is a little messed up and it's a little wild to look at. So disregard all that because we've had a lot of people posting and practicing on here. This is actually the blog that we would like you to practice on, um, provided you provide us your email, and I'll show you how to do that um, if you don't already know how to do that. So this is the email, the website, smemtraining15.blogspot.com. You set that up when you originally set the blog up. If you wanted to get rid of this .blogspot.com and just go with something like smemtraining15.com, you could do that, but you'll have to shell out a little bit of cash to pay for a domain. If you don't want to pay for a domain, you're going to have to allow the blogspot.com to be at the back portion. So. How, once you're in this screen, a lot of people wonder, how do I get back to the editing screen? It's because I want to edit things and clean things up. There's a number of different ways. The easiest way is if you're in Google you Chrome, you should have this bar that shows up up top. And if you're logged in, you're going to have a design. It's going to show design up here. Let's get to see if I can try to zoom in to see it a little better. It's kind of hard to see, but it's design. If you don't have that, it might say sign in. And you hit sign in, and you'll sign into your account. Hit that design, and you are right back to where you started from here in the, uh, the guts of your page where you can edit things. Quick overview on this edit screen. Right up here is a pencil that you can use to create a new post. You can also create a new post over here in the yellow box. From here, you can view your posts. You can also view your posts over here. Again, we've already talked about the view your blog. Other things that you can do down here Comments, you can manage comments. If you have comments, people commenting on your page and you allow that, this is where you can manage them. You can remove it, delete it, mark it as spam. You can go ahead and click on it right here and then respond to it as you would appropriately. If you decide that you don't want to have comments on your page at all, you're going to need to come down to your settings. And we're going to go through all of your settings here because this is important. Um, so settings, blog address, you set that up initially. Let's say for some reason you want to change it. You can change it right here if you want to, but I highly recommend that you don't change it because you want that branding to stay the same. You really only want to change this if your site is taking a big shift. If you wanted to pay for a third, uh, a main URL so that you could say smemtraining.org, you could pay for that and this is where you would buy that domain. 
you are most likely on an incident or even from day to day, you're going to want to collaborate with other people. So you're going to want to use this section right here to give permission to other accounts. So you can see for training here, we have given everyone who is participating in the training access as an author to this account. You can either be an author or an admin. The difference here is an admin has access to the template, can change the layout, can add other people as collaborators, can delete content, edit content, etc. An author can only submit content. They can only ca submit content and post content. They can't edit other people's content um, or change the layout of your blog or invite other people. So keep that in mind as you determine who's going to be an author. For the purpose of practice and training for this, you can either set up your own blog or we can have you, as we showed in the last training module, you want to go to that shared Google Drive folder called SMEM Training. And again, the address to that is W H T T P semicolon backslash backslash bit dot lee backslash SMEM training fifteen. Navigate over to there. Inside there there's going to be a document called roster and links. You're going to click on that roster and link. This is where you're going to give us your information, your name, your Gmail account. Once I have your Gmail account, I'll use this as an example. I can copy that over, come on over to my blog where we were at before and hit add authors. I can throw your name into here and I can again invite you to participate. So within the next day or two, if you participate and you give us your, your Gmail account within here, um, we can go ahead and add you as a collaborator on this blog. If you are watching this recording a couple weeks out, uh, you may have to skip that step and the best way for you to practice is to set up your own blog. Okay, so that's how you add collaborators, very important. Some people ask us often, can we make this blog private so that not only certain people can see it? You certainly can. You edit your privacy settings up here. You can also say that this blog is only available to those people who are authors. So if for some reason you wanted to use this as an internal communication tool as opposed to public, you can do that right here by changing these settings. Posts and comments, we talked about if how you set your comments right here, that's what you would do. If you did not want to have comments, you would change these settings or you can modify them as, as needed. Mobile and email, this is a really important piece because a lot of people like to post to your blog through this, what's called a secret email. If you come in here and type in, um, right now I'm, I'm logged in using my, my state email address, so it's going to say nathan.hunerwaddle.something. I can type in here our secret keyword, and for this I'm going to just type SMEM. And now when I hit save. Put publish immediately. Yes, that's a good point. My, uh, Chris is reminding me that I have an option here. When I send this email, I can either have the, the contents of that email to be saved as a draft that then someone has to come into the blogger to push, or you can have it published immediately. So in this case, I set it up to be nathan.hunerwaddle.smem at blogger.com. If I come in here and I compose an email, Uh, what's going to happen is the t subject line is going to be become my sub uh, title on my post, and what's in my um, in my the body of my email is going to become the post itself. So you can see I have my normal signature line in here. So if I do this right and I hit send, when we go back to our blog and I hit the view blog, remember the view blog piece is up here. Give it a chance to load and think. Scroll down beyond all the extra stuff here. And um, it's probably caught in cyberspace right now because it's not showing up. But uh, that is how you can use a secret email account to post to your blog. That is something that you want to keep close to your chest and make sure that you're not sending it out to all sorts of other people because you don't have to have access to the blog to post to the blog if you have access to this email account. A couple other things that you want to have underneath here. We talked about comments before. If you want to get an email notification when someone comments on your feed, add those emails right here. If you have certain stakeholders in your community that you want to have an email sent to them every time you post a, an update on this blog, add their emails right here. Let me add something here. The, um the, there's another way to do the email post. You can physically enter them yourself right here, or you can put a gadget on the front page 
that says email. And when they click on that, they can choose to have either comments or posts emailed directly to them or even texted to them. And it's sort of an opt-in. So it's a good way to, to tell people, instead of adding a million people to your email list, is tell them to go to the blog and to um, put their email in. And these will automatically, every time you post something, one line or 40 lines, it'll get emailed to them. And that's an excellent point. We can, uh, we'll segue into that. Where do those gadgets lie? Uh, I'm going to save my unsaved changes. OK. Those gadgets lie here in your layout format. This is your layout format. You see each one of these things right here with the little gray on it is what we call a gadget. I can grab this and I can reorder it however I like. And there's a number of different things that I can do to put here. If you look at our map um, as kind of as poorly designed as it is right now, or our, our blog, each one of these maps up here is its own separate gadget. This is a gadget over here with a Twitter stream coming in. This is a gadget with a slideshow. And those all match, going back into the guts here, each one of those matches one of these gadgets, so you can match them up. If you decided that you didn't like one and you wanted to change it, you can hit edit and change this all right here. Keep in mind that this was created by people who have no HTML experience. All of this coding and whatnot was grabbed either directly from Twitter or directly from uh, a Google Map or some other system that just generated this code for them. We did not do any HTML coding in this room. So that's your basic layout. If you want to get more complicated with your layout, you can head on over your, to your template. But word to the wise, you, you either need to have a lot of time on your hands or a little bit more experience before you come over to here to the template and start playing around. You can play with it. You just want to make sure that you have some time um, to get it right. Go into this customized section here, and you are, can pretty much edit anything you want on this blog. OK, so we've covered quite a bit on Blogger already. One thing we haven't touched on is how do you actually post something? That's kind of important. We're going to hit New Post. Right up here is where you post your title. And here's where you post your content. Notice how it's a pretty s simple text interface. Right from here, I can use these uh, little buttons to enter additional content, to do additional editing. Um, I can come over here to add a picture. It gives you a lot of different options for how you're going to add a picture. You can either upload a file from your computer, find photos that are already on the blog, from web albums, etc. You can do the same thing with video. Upload a video, use video from YouTube, etc. My best practice is to not upload a video directly to, to Blogger. Uh, you'll have a lot better quality, a lot more user interface if you load it to YouTube first and then bring it into YouTube or to your blog after that. Now you'll notice here you have a Compose and an HTML tab over here. You never really have to come over to HTML unless you want to add um, more detailed information or you have HTML experience or perhaps you want to paste in an iframe map or something into this. You do not have to, you can work primarily in your compose area if you prefer. From here, you can hit publish right away, but I recommend that before you hit publish, you hit preview. This is going to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it goes live. This is what it's going to look like right down here. Up here is one of those gadgets that's not showing up. But this is what it would look like live. And obviously, I haven't taken time to, to edit and make a nice post. But when you preview, you're going to want to make sure that you come back and fix whatever needs to be fixed. So in this case, let's get rid of that line. You go and preview again. Now it's at least it's all in line there. When you're ready to post, you hit Publish. If you decide that you want to be a little bit more um, thorough under labels, you can put a, a whole bunch of tags um, to highlight what this is going to be. And this helps users not only find your blog and your blog post when they Google it, but also helps you if they come onto your blog and it's been around a while and they want to find information from a fire that was two years ago or whatever it is. If you've labeled it with the fire name, etc., when they do the search, they'll be able to find that. And you can add as many tabs or uh, labels as you want. Let's say that this is sensitive information that is going to be released um, at a certain time in conjunction with, say, a press conference. You can go ahead and draft everything, get it all scheduled to go, and then you can have it published at a certain date and time. So you don't have to publish right away. You can have it published at a later time if you prefer. 
There's some other options down here that if you want to play with, you can play with as well. You come up when you're ready, you hit publish. And it's not going to take you directly to your post. What it's going to do is going to take you back to your post screen. So I can now see all the posts that have come through. And if I want to view this specific post, I hit view right here underneath it. It's going to open up a new window. And now I can view my post. This is the, the post that I just did. Now, how do I link directly to this post? If I wanted to share this post with a friend, a colleague, a boss, I want to link directly to this post. How do I do that? Let's say you're just on the blog in general. This is the, blog, the link to the entire blog, smemtraining15.blogspot.com. But if I give them that link, you're linking to this whole, all of this. I want to link directly to this post. And you'll see that this is fairly standard with other things. You're going to look for a date and time stamp. So if you come on down here to the bottom, you see a 318. It's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. It says 318 down here. You click on that 318. Notice how that link changes. Now you have the exact link to this blog post. As part of our training today, I want you to create a blog post, find that exact link, drag it over to that rosters and links um, training document that's in the shared folder, and then there should be an extra tab right over here under, under column F to share your link to the, the link to your post. Let's make sure I've covered everything that I want to cover. And I believe that I have covered everything. There's a whole lot more that you can do and practice with, um, with blogs. You can come back in here and you can edit it. If for some reason you need to delete it, you can delete it. It's giving you a share option. If you do the share right here, it's going to have you share it on your Google Plus account. That's what that is for. Come on in here, play around, play with the, st the information. You can view statistics on posts. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail on a later module. Have fun. And uh, for practice for this, let me bring up the exercise practice checklist, wherever it went. For Blogger, we're going to either want you to create a new, what's that? Blow it up. Thank you. We're going to blow that up so you can see a little better. For Blogger, we're going to want you to either go to www.blogger.com and create a brand new blog and practice on that. Or if you have, ex uh, have received an invitation from, from us, you can accept that invitation. It will come from smemtraining15 at gmail.com to collaborate on the uh, SMEM Training 15 blog. If you receive that email, go ahead and accept that collaboration request. Then visit www.blogger.com and you should be able to, to use that blog as your practice. I want you to publish a post to that blog, either text, photo, or video, or perhaps one of each. And then try going into the settings to, to see what that secret email is and publish a post via the secret email. The secret email for um, the SMEM training blog is SMEM training 15.SMEM at blogger.com. After you've done that, see if you can come back in and edit it, edit any post, find a link to a specific blog post and post it into that SMEM training roster. And finally, you can wrap it, your practice up with sharing your blog directly on Google+. And that wraps up our training module on Blogger. And if you have any issues um, working this exercise, please email those questions and concerns to nemoteams at gmail.com.